When you embark on a long trip, perhaps cross-country, you do not try to carry all the fuel you need. This is because you are sure of coming across a filling station where you can put more gas in your tank. However, when you travel into deep space, you have to carry enough fuel for the rocket to get you to your destination and back. This is a great limitation that even visionary Elon Musk is painfully aware of as he builds his methane oxygen-powered starship. However, to solve this problem of inadequate fuel, Musk has a solution – a nuclear-powered version of the Starship. How does this alternatively-fueled Starship work, and what is it capable of? Join us as we dive deep into the nuclear-powered Starship. Humans have a long dreamed of exploring the vastness of space. It is part of the natural curiosity to want to know what lies out there. However, most places of interest in space are far away from our planet. Take, for example, planet Neptune, which many astronomers have observed from the Earth. The Voyager 2 spacecraft flew by it 12 years after leaving the Earth, and it was traveling at a mind-numbing speed of 42,000 miles per hour. And it didn't even get so close because it passed 3,000 miles or 4,950 kilometers above its North Pole. That was an incredible amount of time to spend in space. Musk itches to not just explore space, but to set up a colony on planet Mars. If you wonder why he wants to do that, Musk recently revealed this on a podcast show hosted by Lex Friedman. According to Musk, the Earth risks getting too hot for human habitation in 500 million years. While that means everybody watching this video is spared of the horror, Musk is thinking of how to help humanity survive and avoid being wiped out. The plan is to move humans to Mars, hence making us interplanetary for the first time in the history of humankind. So even if some large-scale disaster strikes the Earth, the folks on Mars will continue to carry the torch of human existence. Kudos to Musk for looking out for humanity that far into the future. However, one problem he has to fix is how to move people from the Earth to the Red Planet. Interestingly, Musk is not the only person dreaming of putting people on Mars. NASA has a similar desire. In fact, the space agency is treating the upcoming mission to the Moon as preparation for going to Mars. However, the motivation, scale, and timeline both are working with are vastly different. NASA wants to send up a few well-trained astronauts, while Musk is planning an exodus. His goal is to send up to a million volunteers there within a few years so the colony can exist and depend on itself. NASA is sending its astronauts to do science and expand our knowledge of the universe. If possible, the astronauts might return home knowing why we are here or if life forms exist on the planet. NASA has a couple of rovers crisscrossing the planet. The rovers recently welcomed a Chinese colleague, but nothing beats having humans on the Martian surface. Remarkably, but not surprisingly, Musk is moving faster than the almighty NASA. On the podcast with Friedman, Musk said in the best scenario, the first crewed mission to Mars would take place five years from now, or 2026. In contrast, NASA is planning for its astronauts to arrive on the planet in 2033. Even in SpaceX's worst-case scenario, SpaceX will still be a couple of years ahead of NASA, with 10 years being the time frame. This brings into question the validity of NASA's mission. If Musk successfully sends people to Mars before NASA, does the space agency still need to send astronauts? That is a question nobody is asking yet. The best part is that both Musk and NASA plan to use the Starship to move their respective humans to Mars. NASA is committed to the spacecraft's development to the tune of $2.9 billion. There are two things that Musk has to address for his and NASA's plan to work. They are cutting down the time taken for the trip and ensuring the spacecraft has enough fuel to last the voyage. The first one, the time for the trip, is very important. Deep space is very unforgiving due to the extreme level of radiation voyagers will be subjected to. Using currently available spacecraft, the shortest time between the Earth and Mars is five months, and that is when you take advantage of the alignment of the two planets, which happens like once in two years. Five months is a lot of time to spend in space, even with the radiation protection that the crewed version of the Starship will get. There is enough radiation out there to make people sterile or very sick. Sterility is a big issue because Musk wants a community that can sustain itself. That is also five months of not getting gravity, which will also have devastating effects on the human body. Besides, five months is like tempting fate as a lot could go wrong dooming the mission. The best way is to drastically reduce the travel time by finding a very powerful spacecraft. Musk even wants a faster trip for his voyagers. He wants to sell one-month trips to Mars. Meanwhile, it is not only during trips to Mars that speed is important. For example, scientists sending spacecraft on missions would appreciate getting their results faster. The next part of the equation Musk has to solve is the fuel. You can say fuel is gold in space. 
Even Musk is aware of how crucial fuel is because he said escaping from the pull of the Earth requires lots of propellant and a spacecraft might not have enough to go anywhere after getting to orbit. Look at how the Starship plans to have enough fuel for the trip to Mars. It will take up to five other Starships to a single Mars-bound Starship. This is a lot of logistics raising the cost considerably. The problem is, is that once you leave the Earth, you do not have a chance of refueling, at least not until Musk activates his admittedly crazy plan of producing the methane and oxygen the Starship uses on Mars. So how will Musk solve this double problem of reducing trip times and ensuring there is enough fuel for the journey? The answer lies in the spacecraft mentioned earlier in this video, the Voyager 2. After decades and more than 12 billion miles away from the control station, the Voyager 2 is still going. The spacecraft has thermoelectric generators that use radioactive materials decaying to produce heat, which is converted to electricity used by the systems on the Voyager. With a nuclear-powered Starship, Musk can solve these two problems in one fell swoop. On hearing of running a nuclear reactor on the Starship, several questions could come into your mind, including, is a nuclear Starship safe? Will the Voyagers not be exposed to radiation from inside the Starship itself? What about when there is trouble? Are the people inside and outside the Starship safe? Let's look at the questions one by one. Concerning radiation from the radioactive materials powering the Starship, the design of the spacecraft will prevent that scenario. First, the compartment for human travelers is at the opposite end to where the reactor is located. Moreover, the tanks for the propellant will act as a shield and block out any stray radiation. Yes, the nuclear-powered Starship carried some propellants too. Think of it like a hybrid car with both battery-powered and fossil fuel power motion available. And to take care of potential disasters, the Starship won't use the nuclear reactors until it is in orbit, as suggested by Musk himself. So even with a nuclear-powered Starship, the booster stage will still be powered by a conventional rocket. If any disaster happens to the reactor part in space, we are safe down here. Now let's look at another aspect of the nuclear-powered Starship. Will it be faster than conventional spacecraft? The answer is yes, and it lies in the fact that nuclear fuels pack more energy densities. For example, uranium has an energy that is 4 million times higher than common rocket fuels offer. So of the technology, which one would you prefer? It is far less complicated to manage a tiny amount of uranium than tons of propellant. Nuclear thermal propulsion uses energy released from nuclear reactions to heat liquid hydrogen to about 2,430 degrees Celsius, about eight times the temperature of nuclear power plant cores. The fuel expands and jets out the nozzles at tremendous speeds. This can produce twice the thrust per mass of propellant compared to chemical rockets, allowing the nuclear-powered Starship to travel longer and faster. It can cut down the time taken for the trip by 25% and even enable trips to the moon outside of the biennial alignment window. 